Welcome to Recap King. In this video, we will explain my blood and bones in a flowing galaxy. This movie tells the story of a regular high school junior student who has passion for righteousness and justice. His trait comes to the fore when he notices that his junior school mate is being bullied. He does not abide by it and decides to step in and help her. However, that girl is not only bullied at school, but also abused at home. Will he be able to save her and make her strong enough to stand on her own? Let's find out in My Blood and Bones in a Flowing Galaxy. My Blood and Bones in a Flowing Galaxy begins with the story of a third-year high school student named Kiyozumi Hamada, who arrives late for school, even though the opening ceremony of the new academic year has already started. Because of that, he slipped to the very back of the line, where he saw a first-year female student, Hariku Ramoto. She just stood there motionless as the students pelted her head with papers. After the ceremony, Kiyazumi approached Hari to calm her down, but to his surprise, Hari responded by screaming hysterically, making the situation awkward. During recess, a first-year student, Azaki, told that Kiyazumi had now become the talk of the first-year students. The reason was because Kiyazumi had defended Hari, a girl who had always been the subject of bullying by her classmates. With her strange demeanor and face that is always covered by hair, they think Hari deserves to be bullied. The information proved to be correct. When Kiyazumi visits Hari's class, he sees how some of the students in the class are bullying Hari. One of the bullies even kicked Hari's desk, while Hari herself couldn't help but stare in fear as she covered her face with her hair. However, the bullies fell silent when Kiyazumi entered the classroom and set Hari's desk back to where it belonged. When Kiyazumi was walking in the school corridor, he saw a shoe lying in front of the locker. He took the shoes which turned out to be Hari's. Kiyazumi then returned the shoes to Hari's shoe locker. A few days later, the same thing happens again, where Kiyazumi finds Hari's shoes lying in the school corridor. He put the shoes back in the locker and replaced the name tag on Hari's locker with a new one. One afternoon, Kiyazumi gathered with his classmates at a cafe. Kiyazumi is a popular student, so he has many friends, both boys and girls. And at this time, his female friends were discussing the behavior of the first graders who dared to use the women's restroom near the school as their gathering place. After eating at the cafe, Kiyazumi, feeling suspicious, wanted to confirm the truth of her friend's stories. He rushed back to school and headed for the women's restroom. He saw that the toilet door was closed, but he dared himself to enter it. Inside, he heard a voice from a locked booth at the far end of the room. When he peeked from above, he found Hari behind the booth, her clothes soaked and her body shivering from the cold. The key to open the cubicle was actually within Hari's reach, but Hari wouldn't open the door because she was too afraid to come home soaking wet. After Kiyazumi persuaded Hari, the girl finally opened the door. Kiyazumi quickly gave her his tracksuit and jacket so that Hari wouldn't get cold. Kiyazumi then invites Hari to meet his aunt who runs a laundry business where they can dry Hari's uniform. Kiyazumi's aunt, who felt pity after hearing what happened to Hari, rushed to dry her uniform. While waiting for her uniform to dry, Kiyazumi invited Hari to his house to eat instant hot soup to warm Hari's body. At that moment, Kiyazumi found out that Hari just looked like an ordinary teenage girl. She is very chatty and cheerful when she talks. Hari also thanked Kiyazumi for always helping her, before asking for tips on how to be a brave person. The first tip Kiyazumi gave was to prevent Hari from covering her face with her hair. That way, other people won't think she's weird. Moreover, Kiyazumi thought Hari looked cute when her hair was neatly styled. An hour passed, they returned to the dry cleaners to collect uniforms that had been dried. After that, Kiyazumi took Hari home on foot. Along the way, Hari told about her family. Turns out, her mother left when Hari was little, and since then Hari lives with her father and grandmother. Hari assumes that her mother left because she was kidnapped by a UFO. Hearing Hari's story, Kiyazumi promised to help whenever Hari needed him. He will act as a hero for Hari. Kiyazumi is indeed a kind-hearted guy. He is also obsessed with heroes and wants to be a hero. Therefore, he did not hesitate to demonstrate the superhero pose in front of Hari. Seeing Kiyazumi's ridiculous behavior, Hari couldn't help but laugh. But her laughter made Kiyazumi like her even more. He wished he could hear Hari's laughter every day. The next day, when Kiyazumi was getting ready to go to school, his aunt came to his house and left a peanut cake for Hari. When Hari took off her wet uniform yesterday, Kiyazumi's aunt saw the bruises on Hari's body, and that made her feel even more sorry for Hari. Kiyazumi then took the peanut cake with him, then he waited for Hari near the bridge. After they met, Kiyazumi gave the peanut cake to Hari. That afternoon at school, from his classroom, Kiyazumi saw Hari being bullied again by male students. Even though her classmate, Azaki, stands up for Hari, they still bully her. They even threw the peanut cake that Kiyazumi's aunt gave. Hari tries to fight back, 
as she remembers her promise to Kiyazumi to be brave. However, her courage was still not enough. Fortunately, Kiyazumi came to protect Hari. But as a result, Kiyazumi's face was hit by a peanut cake. The throw was so hard that it injured his face, and he had to be taken to the school clinic. While they are together at the clinic, Kiyazumi advises Hari to report the bullying she received at school to her father. However, Hari refused because she was very afraid of her father. Hari is determined to fight the bullies alone without her father knowing. Hearing this, Kiyazumi became even more curious about Hari's family life. Days passed and Kiyazumi and Hari's relationship grew closer. Every day, Kiyazumi waited for Hari at the bridge to go together to school. One morning, as they were walking together to school, Azaki approached them and gave Hari a candy. When Hari received the candy, Kiyazumi accidentally saw Hari's wrist which was bruised from the blow. Although surprised, Kiyazumi chose to remain silent. In his class, he asked his friend to grip his hand really tight, so he would know what it's like to be hurt and bruised. His friend complied, and as a result Kiyazumi's hand was sore and bruised. Kiyazumi's curiosity carried over to the house. He kept thinking who hurt Hari so that the girl got so many bruises. The next day, Hari goes to Kiyazumi and asks him to teach math. Hari feels that she is not good at math, and she needs to get extra lessons to catch up. Kiyazumi agreed and invited Hari to come to his house. In the afternoon, Hari visits Kiyazumi's house and they spend time studying together. Kiyazumi's mother who saw her son bringing a girl home looked very happy, because this was the first time Kiyazumi brought a girl home. In the late afternoon, Kiyazumi's mother takes Hari home by car. On the way, Hari saw her father's car in front of them. Hari then called her father to pull over. When he came down, Hari's father's face looked unfriendly. When Kiyazumi's mother apologized for making Hari come home late, Hari's father responded stiffly. Kiyazumi's mother also asked about Hari's grandmother at home. Hearing this, Hari's father's face stiffened. He accuses Hari of having told Kiyazumi's mother about their family. Then, Kiyazumi's mother corrected by saying about the difficulty of caring for elderly people at home. Hari's father replied that Hari's grandmother was in good health and living in a nursing home. After that, they said goodbye to go home. The next day, Kiyazumi was waiting for Hari near the bridge as usual. But Hari never appeared, even after Kiyazumi had waited a long time. Worried, Kiyazumi rushed to find Hari in her classroom. He was surprised when he saw Hari already sitting in class, covering her face with her hair. Hari also avoided Kiyazumi and refused to talk to him. The next day, Kiyazumi put the lunch in Hari's shoe locker. However, when she came home from school, Hari returned the lunch to Kiyazumi's locker. Realizing Kiyazumi saw what she was doing, Hari immediately ran outside. Kiyazumi chased after her and asked Hari to accept the lunch because it was from his aunt. Hari did not give any response and immediately left. Kiyazumi was saddened by Hari's change towards him. Hari also looks weird again, like at the beginning of the academic year where she always covers her face. In the evening, Kiyazumi came to Hari's house and shouted for her from outside the house, but no one greeted him. In the end, he went home disappointed. Kiyazumi thinks that Hari has been hurt by a UFO, and he intends to destroy the UFO. That night when Kiyazumi was studying in his room, he heard the voice of someone calling him. From his bedroom window, he saw Hari standing outside his house. Hari came to give a warning that Kiyazumi and his mother were in danger. Hari asks Kiyazumi and his mother to run away because the UFOs are already preparing to attack. Hearing this, Kiyazumi finally realized that all this time, the UFO story told by Hari was referring to Hari's father. Then, Kiyazumi turned on the porch light and was very surprised when he saw Hari's face covered in bruises. Hari explains that her father is a psychopath. Her father asked for Kiyazumi's address, but Hari gave him a fake address. She then tried to run away because she was worried that sooner or later her father would find Kiyazumi's house. Hari wants to make sure that Kiyazumi is safe and unharmed. On the other hand, Kiyazumi felt proud that Hari had become strong. They are determined to take down the UFO together. After that, Hari shouted that she would not lose. Then, she fell limp in front of Kiyazumi. While crying, Hari told the truth that her grandmother had been killed by her father. Her grandmother's body was dumped into the lake in a suitcase. Hearing that, Kiyazumi could only hug her while comforting Hari. In the middle of the night, they go out together by bicycle to the lake, where Kiyazumi then looks for the suitcase that Hari's father drowned. After a long search, Kiyazumi finally found the suitcase. However, when opened, the suitcase was empty. Hari suspects that the suitcase was brought by her mother when her mother left Hari. In the suitcase she found an earring her mother had worn. Hari screamed hysterically, finally she learned that her mother had died in the same way as her grandmother, drowned in the lake by her father. They immediately called the police to arrest Hari's father. Then, the two of them went to Hari's house. But before they could enter the house, Hari's father hit Kiyazumi off guard with a golf club. 
He as Yumi lay helpless with only one hit, but Hari's father kept hitting him non-stop. And when he finally stopped, he turned his sights on Hari. He then dragged them into the house, so that he could burn them along with his house. Inside the house, Kiyazumi cries for not being able to protect Hari, but Hari then responded by pointing her finger up, signaling that she had defeated the UFO. After that, she threw her mother's earrings to distract her father. Then Hari got up and grabbed a golf club and beat her father. Hari's anger had driven her mad. She continued to beat her father to death. Satisfied, she said goodbye to Kiyazumi. Some time later, Kiyazumi was hospitalized. Meanwhile, Hari who had recovered from her injuries, then changed her identity because she wanted to forget all the tragedies she had experienced. The police also followed up on the murder of Hari's mother and grandmother by searching for their bodies in the lake. Even Kiyazumi was interrogated by the police. However, Kiyazumi only said that he was only helping Hari out of her father's shadow. After being discharged from the hospital, Kiyazumi went about his routine by returning to school. He missed Hari's figure and continued to wait for her by the bridge before leaving for school, but the day never came. Two seasons have passed, and Kiyazumi is already a university student. As he walked home from his campus, he unexpectedly passed Hari who now looked different. Her hair was no longer loose like it used to be in high school, but was tied in a ponytail. They then finally met again, and got married. At the end of the film, Hari looks pregnant and will soon give birth. Hari is seen struggling alone in the hospital to give birth to her baby, while Kiyazumi is stuck in traffic in the middle of the road because a car drifted into the river. Here, his conscience as a hero reappears. Without thinking, he jumped into the river to save the drowning victim. Kiyazumi was finally able to help all the victims, but unfortunately, he himself was dragged by the swift current of the river. Not long after, he drowned. Meanwhile, Hari managed to give birth to a baby boy. She raised the baby alone, without Kiyazumi's presence. But Hari often told Kiyazumi's kindness to her son, so her son determined to continue his father's legacy to uphold justice. Even one day, the son imitated Kiyazumi's signature superhero pose, which made Hari laugh because she was reminded of her past. The film ends. The message from this film is that you don't need to have superpowers to be a hero. With will, determination, and a high sense of empathy, we can help others to uphold goodness. When you see someone being bullied, put yourself in their shoes and feel how it feels to be bullied by others so that you have the empathy to help others.